Whenever guests come into the facility to look at cats and dogs, they are able to view many of them without having a staff or volunteer member present. They can go into our adoption dog kennels, community cat and kitten playroom, or the cat condos and look at all those pets. We do let them know at the front desk to make sure they're washing their hands in between touching each pet, but these areas they can go through on their own. Sometimes we do have guests that come in and they're looking for a smaller dog or they've seen someone on the website who is not housed in the adoption area. If this happens, there will be times when we will ask a volunteer to show guests to the back areas. Those areas include small dog room, stray dog room, and any dogs temporarily housed in the hallways. One of the main reasons that we have a staff or volunteer um, show guests to these stray areas is because we want to ensure that they understand that they are not allowed to interact with any dog that does not have a green sticker on its kennel tag. And we also want to make sure that they have hand sanitizer on them if they are going to interact with any green sticker dogs. So if they do not have hand sanitizer, they are not allowed to touch anyone. If they do have hand sanitizer, they can interact with the green sticker dogs only, um, but they have to be sanitizing in between each dog. So as a volunteer taking guests around, you also need to keep an eye if they have children with them that those children are not. Because sometimes the kids get really excited when you know their mom or dad is taking them through there and they're looking at a potential dog to adopt and they will try and pet every single one. And sometimes they can be rather sneaky. So definitely keep an eye on children that are going back there with you guys. Um, and of course, make sure they're sanitizing in between every green sticker dog. If that dog does not have a sticker, do not let the guest interact with them whatsoever. Um, some of those dogs too, it's important to keep in mind that they have a green sticker on their kennel tag and they might be ready for adoption immediately, um, but maybe there's no room up in the front adoption areas. So definitely if you have any questions about whether that dog is available or when it is available, definitely just bring them back up to the uh, front desk and they can ask any questions that they may have. Just be sure to, to get the pet's name before you come up so we know exactly which pet that they are interested in. When guests come into the facility, there's going to be a, a few questions that are typically asked almost every single time. Um, so the, we're going to kind of go over those just so you kind of know what to say in those situations. Um, <clears throat> the first one is, is this pet ready for adoption? So if you're in the adoption dog kennels, then yes, those pets are all ready for adoption. They have been spayed and neutered. They have been microchipped, fully vaccinated. They are ready to go home today. Um, now, sometimes they will have reservations on them, but typically in our adoption dog areas, um, those guys are available. Again, it's a question for the front desk just to confirm that they don't have any reservations on them. Um, but generally, in that area, they are ready for adoption. Now, if you're back in the stray dog area, one of the ways you can determine if they're ready for adoption is by looking at their kennel tag. If they have been spayed and neutered, if they have received all their vaccines, which is going to be DAPPV, uh, Bordetella, and rabies, then they are probably up for adoption. Um, but again, you can confirm that with the front desk. <clears throat> So the next question that they might ask you is, what is a reservation? So before our dogs even go through the adoption process, people can go online and they can fill out an application for adoption and they can put reservations on certain pets that they're interested in. So while some of the dogs might have reservations on them, many of them won't. Um, typically what we see for reservations is dogs that look to be more purebred um, small dogs and many of the puppies. So those are going to be our, you know, our most popular adopted out pets. But um, you never know who has a reservation or not. It, you know, it, it doesn't always come down to how they look. So the front desk will be able to pull up that pet's information and tell you if there's any reservations on them. <laughs> now another question that we often get asked is, what can you tell me about this pet and is there anything wrong with them? 
Um, people seem to think that if an animal ends up in the shelter, it is damaged goods um, and the owner simply didn't want them. And that's not always the case. Sometimes we receive pets that are wonderful pets, but maybe the owner can no longer care for them. Maybe the owner has passed away. Maybe they got loose and the owner doesn't know how to find them. So there's going to be a, a lot of different situations behind their background. Um, but as far as what we know about the pet, all we know is what we have observed before they came in to stay with us. So every once in a while we get owner surrenders and they're able to provide that history on the pet, but most times that's not the case. So that's where filling out pet personality reports and things like that is going to be the most beneficial because people do wanna know as much as possible about a pet before they adopt them. So any kind of information like that, um, again, we're going to keep it in their file um, in the system so that we can pull that up and answer any questions they may have about the pet's personality. Another good way to see this pet's personality is to leash them up and take them outside if they're a green sticker dog or housed in the adoption area. It's okay for the guests to interact with them, but you would definitely want to be the one that is pulling them out of the kennel for them. You guys can take them into dog runs. Let them socialize with them, let them see those personalities, and that'll be one of the best ways that we can show that off to them. Another question you may be asked is what is included in the adoption fee? So all of our pets are going to be spayed and neutered. They're going to be microchipped and fully vaccinated based on their age. So if we do have puppies or kittens, they may, may need booster shots at some point after they've been adopted, but all of that information will be provided to the adopter. All of our pets also receive dewormer and flea and tick treatments, and any dogs over six months of age will also be heartworm tested. If they ask you how they can go about adopting a pet, um, the first step for them is going to be to go online and fill out an application, or they can go up to the front desk and fill out an application there. After they've filled out that application, then the front desk staff will review it. And if they are approved, they will be able to go forward with the adoption. If someone asks you how long until a pet is adoption ready, maybe you're taking them into the small dog room or the stray dog room um, and that pet is not ready yet, it really is going to vary. So some of them might not be big enough or old enough to be spayed and neutered. Uh, we do not adopt out any pets that have not been altered. So that is something they'd have to wait on. We'd also need to make sure that they've been um, microchipped and fully vaccinated, heartworm tested. We want to make sure that everybody's as healthy as possible before they get adopted. So the entire process of um, going through adoption could take days or it could take several weeks. Um, if we have a dog that is heartworm positive, it could take months. So they do have to complete their treatment to clear themselves of the heartworms before they can be adopted. But if we do have someone that wants to adopt a dog that is heartworm positive, they can foster that dog, put them through the treatment that is paid for by the Humane Society, and then as soon as that pet is cleared from heartworms, they can go ahead and come in and complete that adoption. Some important things to remember when you're taking guests around the shelter is that if you don't know the answer to a question that they're asking, that's okay. Um, please don't you know, provide assumptions or take guesses on what you think the answer is, simply ask a staff member or bring them back up to the front desk so that we can answer them correctly. We want to make sure we're providing accurate information to our potential adopters. Another thing to remember is that even though a guest may have filled out an application, been approved and put a reservation on a pet, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will be chosen to adopt that pet. We might have several people in line before them um, that could potentially get the pet adopted before we get to their name on the list. Another thing to consider is that even though a pet may have lots of reservations on it, that does not mean that they don't have a chance to adopt the pet. We might have a pet that has 10 reservations, but nobody on the reservation list answers the call when we reach out to them. Maybe they've already adopted somebody else or maybe they're no longer interested. So anybody who puts a reservation on a pet does have a chance. It's not a guarantee, but they do have a chance. Also keep in mind that 
there are a lot of pets in our system that are not housed in the shelter. So if you happen to be showing someone around, they don't really see someone that they're interested in, you can let them know that they can go online to our website, which is hsnba.org, and all of the pets that are in our system are gonna be on the website. So this is going to include anybody who's housed in our shelter, but it's also gonna include those that are at PetSmart or that are placed in foster homes currently. Our website does update every 24 hours. Uh, we always have new pets coming in. We also have pets going out all day, every day. Um, so that, upset, that website is gonna be the best form of information for all the pets that we have in our system. The last thing to remember is that guests are not allowed to prepay for adoptions. Um, sometimes they are very adamant about wanting a certain pet and they will offer to prepay for the adoption or even prepay plus make a generous donation. Um, this is not allowed, okay? Everybody needs to go through the process the correct way. You never know if we're going to do a spay and neuter surgery on a pet that has underlying medical issues that we weren't aware of because they were astray and potentially not make it through surgery. So uh, we do not allow prepayments for adoption. They have to wait until they are fully adoptable and then they need to do the application um, and go through the process just like everyone else. The most important thing I want you guys to remember when you're giving guests tours around the shelter is that not everyone who comes in and um, wants to adopt a cat or dog is going to have good intentions with that pet. We know that the world is full of bad people and some of those bad people do come into the shelter uh, looking to adapt a cat or a dog. Sometimes they can come off as a sincere person but the majority of the time, these people are gonna give you red flags from the beginning, whether it's the way they interact with the pets or something that they mention in their conversation with you that kind of gives you an uneasy feeling. If at any point, um, you know, while you're giving a tour, if, if something is said or done that makes you extremely uncomfortable um, or makes you questionable of their intentions, you have to let a staff member know immediately. If you want to be discreet, simply bring them up to the front desk so that they can continue asking questions or conversing about the pet, and you can slip over to a different staff member and let them know what it is that you saw or heard that made you question their intentions, okay? Um, we need to be paying attention to this because we know that there are, in fact, bad people in the world. So with that being said, um, if you guys have any questions about anything that is in this training video, please feel free to email me at volunteer at hsnba.org. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching.